One of the things that I get to do and I love doing is traveling all over Canada and talking to people about disinformation and misinformation. And when I do these workshops and these presentations, it's really fascinating because we always start talking out about the disinformation, misinformation that is more or less obvious that we all might be more or less used to seeing online. But then we start talking about media, mainstream media, and how mainstream media has been really good at perpetuating misinformation and disinformation, often by accident, by accident meaning through um, not being well enough staffed, having journalists doing way, way, way too much with way too few resources, with like a lot of the tenets of journalism falling by the wayside as people don't have what they need to have to get you know, the news written together the way that would have been quality a couple of years ago. I mean, many years ago, but then also how disinformation um, easily finds itself into the into the mainstream press such that it makes average people very skeptical of things like, you know, the CBC, quite frankly. I do workshops and uh, in some cases I'll hear from uh, from participants saying that they, they very genuinely think that CBC is disinformation. Now, there's a whole like world of problems that come along with this that journalists especially need to figure out and engage with and I'm not like fix <laughs> like that's not what this video is about. This video is about what happens when our government pays, I guess, to create modules that explain to average people what is disinformation. The answer to what happens is uh, it's very bad what happens. It's, 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 it's what I'm about to show you, okay? So here is a super short clip from uh, Global Affairs Canada. It's a video that only other federal departments shared and liked, and so that also makes it look really sketchy and stuff. But let me see if I could get this for you on full screen. And we're going to watch this together. It's only like 30 seconds. Okay, let's do this. Disinformation has been effective. Disinformation has been effective for the past uh, hundred years. Uh, you know, this is again uh, something that uh, uh, Lenin and Stalin engaged in uh, during the Second World War, uh, during the Cold War and such. Hold on. Let's stop right there. Disinformation. Okay, so this is Marcus Kolga. And he is being interviewed in these videos in episode one of our series, Democracy and Disinformation. And Global Affairs Canada's Twitter account says that Marcus Kolga explains how disinformation can affect more than our social media feeds. And he the past, uh, years, darts right uh, off. You know, this is, again, uh, something that uh, uh, Lenin and Stalin engaged in uh, during the Second World War, uh, during the Cold War and such. Uh, and it's been uh, extremely... Okay, so we're going to stop right there. As I said, 30 seconds. We're going to go back into it. We can see how close we are to being finished. So, I mean, right off the bat, this is a video that was shared a couple of days ago, and it hasn't been taken down. And it's like, so disinformation has been, has been around for 100 years, says Kolga, which is like... I mean, sorry, it was invented in 1924. Like, are you kidding me? Like, pro it's just propaganda and, and how propaganda operates and the different ways that propaganda operates. I mean, that was not invented in 1924. Um, but fine, if he wants to say 100 years because it's kind of like a, a, a vibe, right? 100 years is more of a vibe than actually like a number of years. That's fine. But then he goes right into talking about Lenin, who has not been alive for 100 years. He has been dead for 100 years. In fact, he died 100 years ago last January, like the January that just passed. And and, and then and Stalin, I mean, Stalin died later, uh, died in the 1950s. But here we have a guy saying that disinformation goes back 100 years. In, uh, during the Second World War, uh, during the Cold War and such. And that it was propaganda that, that Lenin spread during the Second World War and the Cold War, two wars that Lenin was not alive during. Now, okay, maybe he just threw Lenin's name out there and has no fucking idea what he's talking about. And what he really means is Stalin, because of course, you know, Lenin, In if you want to just demonize communism, then you're just gonna be like, oh, Lenin, Stalin, they're all terrible, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, these, these were different men. And if you know 
anything about communism, which Kolga apparently thinks he does, you know that these are not the same people. And by lumping them together, you're hoping that people go, wait a minute, Lenin died in 1924. What are you talking about? World War II started in 1938. Then, of course, he says, well, and Stalin. And so Stalin, of course, yes, Stalin was alive during World War II. Stalin was only alive for the start of the Cold War, right? The Cold War starts in, like, 1947 and goes right up until, like, almost the 1990s. And Stalin is alive until 1953. Okay. So, I mean... The narratives there are pretty wacky, not to mention, I mean, the way that disinformation and misinformation even operates in Canada allows for us to, to imagine that um, the communists were our enemies during World War II, which they weren't. They were allied with us, right? But anyway, so let's go back to Kolga. We'll finish this 30 second clip. And Stalin engaged in uh, during the Second World War, uh, during the Cold War and such. Uh, and it's been uh, extremely effective since Vladimir Putin started uh, engaging in, in the use of disinformation in the early 2000s. Oh, and then there it is. Ah, uh, oh, Canada. This is official propaganda from our government. And it, like, what is really awesome about it is it's like in the shortest clip, they managed to this guy like completely giving disinformation in the most kind of brass way. Now, I don't know Kolga. Uh, we've interacted a couple of times online. I went back to see like what kind of interactions we ever had. And like, he thinks I'm a Stalinist. He thinks I'm a hack. Um, I mean, I would say the same things about him. I mean, throwing around like random accusations. He might as well be a Stalinist too. Like everybody's a fucking Stalinist who I don't like, whatever. He's obviously a hack. Um, but Kolo, uh, he is the founder of something called Disinfo Watch. And I mean, number one for me, the big red flag is he works for the McDonald Laurier Institute. And this is a right wing think tank and a very virulently anti-communist think tank. And so like right off the bat, this guy, you know, butters his bread off of doing disinformation for the right. You know, like, like, can we be clear that there are objective facts, which Kolga can't get right, but you know, of the objective facts, there are always different ways that we can understand the world. And the way that he understands the world is very clearly right wing. But what is disinfo watch? I mean, as someone that does disinformation workshops for working class people, I've never really come across this guy's platform. You go to his website and I love this. His research partners, let me read this to you. It gives you an idea of what kind of disinformation uh, gremlin we're, we're dealing with here. Uh, his research partners are the United States Department of State Global Engagement Center, Journalists for Human Rights, uh, JHR, what the fuck? Let's talk about that in a bit. Uh, NATO Stratcom Center of Excellence, mm, red flag, red flag, Center for European Policy Analysis, European Values, Montreal Institute for Genocide and Human Rights Studies at Concordia, Henry Jackson Society, Stockholm Free, Word, Free World Forum, U -E bah, EU Eastern Stratcom, EU versus Disinformation, and the Vilnius Institute. Okay, so... I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Like, Canada's a proud member of NATO. So maybe, yeah, having a guy that's done work with NATO to tell us what disinformation is makes sense from the government of Canada's perspective. But this is pure disinformation. And it is so hilarious that, that, our, that the federal government is pushing this forward to explain to people what is disinformation. You know, as someone who is, like, a socialist and I would be a communist if we had communist models in Canada that I could say like, yeah, I had faith in that working. Uh, you know, I can just tell you in 10 seconds what is dis disinformation and not actually need to rely on any of the tropes that you might expect someone who is a socialist to rely on. So what is disinformation? Disinformation is simply taking facts and torquing them in a certain way to make you believe certain things, to make you think that Justin Trudeau owns the CBC, to make you think that the global economy is in the control of five uh, super evil individuals we can get super you know anti-semitic or racist on those kinds of conspiracies uh, or uh, you know disinformation can be anything from like you know the interference that has been reported as happening from inter from different countries around the world or it comes from our own leaders and i think you know global affairs canada has got a really good example of, of disinformation right now which is continuing to insist that we are not giving weapons to Israel or we're not giving lethal weapons to Israel or full weapons systems to Israel, but then finding out thanks to Alex Kosh the Maple that actually StatsCan is saying, no, we have actually provided armor vehicles and weapons 
items to Israel. Did they go to the Israeli government? Did they go to Israeli companies? Were they used in the war field? We don't know that. But, you know, right off the bat, we can see how disinformation actually does operate in Canada from the very uh, echelons of government that are making these videos. So I don't know, like, you know, this is <laughs> this is being paid for by our money and we can go on that track. But what I find is so, so, so interesting is over the past weekend. So as I said, this was released last week, uh, 27th or so of March. And over the past weekend, conservatives lost their collective shit because of a tweet that was sent out on Thursday of last week or so uh, featuring two women working in a kitchen uh, at, from Veterans Affairs Canada wishing veterans a happy holiday March season or something very wishy-washy and not that clear. And conservatives lost their shit. They're like, how can you call the sacred days of Holy Week the, the March holiday season or something like this? And it's like, I mean, aside from the fact that the liberals always screw this kind of thing up and they are absolutely terrible at just saying things like happy Easter, like in the same way that they might say happy anything else. Uh, but, you know, it's also Holy Week. And so there are actually a lot of different holidays that happen from Thursday to Sunday or Monday. Uh, there's also other religious events happening. So, OK, fine. Like it's I think it's a kind of a stupid way to have written it for sure. But I, I didn't lose my mind over it. Not to mention, I mean, the, the women were making deviled eggs that were like, uh, hyper color. I've never seen a deviled egg in my life that wasn't white. Uh, and they were like really neon and stuff. The men all missed the cooking part of this anyway. But I think it was so interesting because that is how the right uses misinformation is to actually fixate on something that is true that happened that was that was put out and make it about something that is completely ridiculously what it is completely ridiculously not. And the fact that I didn't see anyone on the right saying, whoa, 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 we're paying for videos on disinformation that can't even get basic facts right. You know, this this is how we do see misinformation operating within Canada. And it's symbiotic with the liberals because the liberals consistently put stuff out that's not good, that's criticizable as I'm doing right now, that sucks, that wishes people a happy holiday, bunch of days in March or whatever the hell they said. And, in the, and the conservatives are so attuned to it that they're able to glom on instantly and make their own issues out of it. And then average people only hear the conservative perspective on all this stuff, which is intended to make you enraged and, and, and get you angry. And, and, you know, Justin Trudeau's an idiot. And he controls the CBC and all this stuff that is like, I mean, he doesn't control the CBC and whether or not he's an idiot is kind of immaterial because who cares? Like he's the prime minister of Canada. <laughs> like that's how it works. So, you know, we have to be really, really good at identifying misinformation and doing our best to uh, really push against it. But it's really difficult in Canada because the, the key to actually being able to do this work in a way that isn't then also producing another kind of disinformation, which is to be like Vladimir Putin, the reincarnated Stalin or whatever the fuck Kolga is being paid to say, is that, you know, we actually have to keep our eye on 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 what is happening with our within our own government to see how our own governments and then journalists interact with the misinformation that we do get from our own official lines you know in a in a, in a properly functioning comp country i almost said com company because that's kind of where Canada's at these days, we would actually have journalists to be able to do this work rather than journalists that just have enough time to parrot the line that's coming from Global Affairs Canada. And in these videos, I have talked so, so much about how little information we really do get from journalists gathering their own news. If they're not handed it from a press conference or a press statement or a readout, we don't necessarily get anybody poking around and finding out more information unless you know we're talking about Alex Kosh at the Maple. And this is poisonous for our democracy, especially when it comes to foreign affairs. Because someone like Kolga, I mean, if you can let the, the video continue running, the original video is 30, uh, three minutes, and it's all, I mean, just as bad as that little clip that they then posted. Um, he, he instantly goes into why it's so important for us to have sanctions on Russia, which is like, what? <laughs> That's, sorry, how are you talking about this in a video about disinformation? What the fuck? Like, what does that have to do with anything? But that is how, you know, we have these foreign affairs uh, narratives that are absolutely unchallenged by mainstream media, by journalists that have resources and that have jobs. And that work then is left to the disparate groups of people like me trying to like get as many v views as possible so you can kind of see through the bullshit. 
And, you know, that's not good enough. It's not good enough. And, you know, when I see someone like Dimitri Lascaris, who's, you know, filmed an actual Israeli air raid because he was in the West Bank and could see it from the West Bank. And you think, like, has has a single Canadian journalist captured that on camera yet? I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. We we allow foreign affairs in this country, whether that's foreign affairs, um, the way that Foreign Affairs Canada talks about it or the way that we understand foreign affairs to happen in Canada. We let that narrative be driven by those in power, mostly government and, of course, business. And journalists don't challenge it. They don't give us the tools to challenge it. They just say this is the news and then expect us to be like, got it. That's dangerous and that is disinformation. And I think, you know, as things continue to get even worse in Israel and as things get worse in Ukraine as well, where the end game in Ukraine becomes more and more obviously diplomatic rather than just killing average people and this in this endless churn of murder and death, the disinformation is going to get worse. And so I don't I also like do think it's very interesting to see the timing of the, the federal government trying to put out these these videos that are just going to prime us to accept disinformation in the way that it works in Canada and in, instead allow us to just be like pissed at Putin for doing disinformation for the last 100 years in, in the West or whatever the, the way that they want to actually explain this. So I, I don't know. I, I'd be curious to hear what you think about disinformation and misinformation. Uh, and certainly I've talked to a lot of people who really struggle with understanding how to cut through this bullshit. And so if, if you've got other questions for me, I'd be totally happy to hear them and I would do my best to answer those for you. Because as I say, as much as I have a political a perspective on the world, I think the most important thing is that we at least can identify that Lenin hasn't been alive for 110 years.